It's one of the best and most authentic things you can do to encourage, empower, and motivate another person is look them in the eye and tell them what you appreciate about them. They'd actually rather have that than even most really nice gifts if you do it genuinely. But what if we put more attention on what was good, what was working, what we appreciated, what we liked, and a little less attention on what we didn't and what wasn't working so well? It makes a difference. I see this day in and day out in the work that I do. People are starving for acknowledgement, starving for it. How do you empower people around you and organizations, the groups that you're in, to be successful? How do you empower yourself to be successful? And the key that I found through my experience in sports and then in business and now in the work that I do as a consultant, as a speaker, as a trainer and a coach, the power of appreciation is really the key. When any of you work in an environment that you would consider either a little bit or maybe moderately cynical? Anybody? <laughs> I know your coworkers are here, you don't want to say, but yeah. Okay, here's kind of how it is when we go to work, right? We go to work, we may be like really happy, we go to work all of a sudden, like everyone's at work. This is my favorite analogy for work, is we're all rowing. Oh, e oh, 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 right? And then you come in one day in a really great mood. Hey, everybody, how's it going? I'm in a good mood. How you doing? I appreciate you. And what does everybody do? Oh, stops rowing, looks at you. Shut up, sit down and row. Oh, e oh. You know what I mean? Keith Harrell talked about it yesterday. Any of you in here ever been made fun of for being too happy? Yeah. What is up with that? Mike Robbins is an expert in teamwork, communication, and the power of appreciation. Through his keynotes and customized seminars, he inspires people to work together effectively, appreciate themselves and others, and communicate in a supportive, positive way. As a standout baseball player at Stanford University, Mike helped lead his team to the College World Series. He was voted the team's most inspirational player because of his passion and leadership both on and off the field. Mike played baseball professionally with the Kansas City Royals until an injury to his pitching arm cut his career short. Using his impressive background, his personal story of adversity and success, his fun and engaging style, and his experience as a business coach, Mike empowers his corporate and association audiences to reach new levels of success. Individuals and teams within your organization will learn specific tools and techniques to become more productive, positive, and effective. So there I am, right? Sitting, arm in the ice bucket, listening to the minister tell this story about Willie Mays. Something about the story really touched me. And I actually started to cry. So you get the scene, right? I'm in the locker room with all my teammates, and I'm crying. And I'm doing one of those, you ever do it, you know, where you start to cry, and it's like not the right place to cry, and you're kind of doing the, oh, I got a cold, you know. <laughs> Sorry, it was doing that, but it, I, couldn't, I couldn't play it off. I just, I started to cry. And the reason that I did was because something about that story really spoke to me about what was going on in my life right then. Now, although I was clearly not Willie Mays, I realized the courage it took for him to continue to go on and persevere. And I started to think about myself. And there I was, 23 years old. I'd played baseball since I was seven. Lots of ups, lots of downs. I had made it to that point. And sitting there, right there, staring down what I kind of looked at as the barrel of the gun called, you're not going to make it. Because I had a feeling that that was probably going to be it for me with my arm injury. I had this weird sense of pride and appreciation for myself for what I'd accomplished. And I realized something really important about personal success and team success in that moment. And that is how important appreciation is and how lacking it is in so many places. Now I did end, you know, I saw the doctor the next day. I came back to California, had an operation on my arm and tried to rehab as much as I could. I didn't come back from that injury. So that was the end of my career. But that moment that day in the locker room really stuck with me. And then I went and got into the real world. Right? I got a job. I was working for a couple of internet companies. And I figured, oh, of course, this will be different. These people are mature. They're real adults. It's not like baseball. <laughs> Same thing. In the middle of the dot-com boom, everybody's making money and uh, complaining. Griping, oh, how come our stock price isn't here? Why don't we do that? What's going on? We should be better. I should... 
Same kind of thing. And I couldn't figure it out because even the people that seemed successful didn't really seem to appreciate it very much. True champions are the kind of people that in the midst of adversity find something that's working. Make a joke. Make it fun. Hey, how can we make this cool? Look for the things that are working. Because part of being a champion is being a leader. And here's kind of the good news and bad news about leaders. Being a leader, and any of us who've stepped into leadership in our lives at any level, know it can be really exciting and exhilarating and very rewarding, right? But here's another thing about leadership. It's a really bad idea. It's a bad idea, isn't it? People make you wrong. They judge you. They laugh at you. Some of the greatest leaders we've ever had in our world have been assassinated. Assassinated for standing up for peace. Mahatma Gandhi got assassinated. And what did Gandhi teach us? Be the change you want to see in the world. You be that first. And then go change others. We're so busy trying to change everyone else. Oh, you do this. If they just did that, it'd be better. If you just figured it out. If that person was a better communicator, if this person was a better team player, if that person did their report better and sent it to me on time, or whatever. But Gandhi taught us, be the change. It's got to start here. I'm sitting over here, not saying a word, just looking at the agenda. Number six just says Mike Robbins. So we get done with point number five, and the meeting kind of starts to wrap up. You know, people, oh, well, and people start to actually get up and leave and walk out. And I'm looking around, I'm thinking, well, Brian didn't say anything. Maybe I'm off the hook, right? <laughs> so I'm kind of inching my way out the door. Then all of a sudden, Brian stands up and goes, hold on, hold on, hold on, everybody. Come back in, come back, come on, sit back down, sit back down. I forgot. Robin's over here, wants to try to motivate you guys. <laughs> That was my big intro. Way to go, Brian. Thanks, man. So now everyone kind of sits back down begrudgingly, and I pop up out of my seat. And I start saying things. I don't know what I started to say. My heart is like about to jump out of my chest. Well, guys, I've been thinking, you know, what if we work together better and uh, help each other out and appreciate each other and work like a team? Wouldn't that be great? Nothing. Not a peep. And they're looking at me like I got three heads. And I'm trying whatever, you know, and I'm running around, and I'm waving my arms, and I'm telling baseball stories, and nothing. About five minutes into it, I'm thinking, this is going really bad. <laughs> but then I realized something. I was talking about something. I wasn't showing them what I meant. So I stopped, right in the middle of you know, whatever I was doing, and I just kind of looked at everybody. And I went around the entire table, just like that. Honest, from my heart, whatever I wanted to acknowledge or thank them for. What I respected about them, what I admired about them. And then I got done with everybody and I sat back down in my chair and it got real quiet. And it was one of those awkward, you know that awkward moment? <laughs> and I'm starting to look around and thinking, did I do something bad? But it was kind of like popcorn. It was like, you could feel it, right? Someone wanted to say something, it's like popcorn, about which, which one's the first kernel's gonna pop, and then all of a sudden someone, pop! Someone said something. Well, that was cool, what if we acknowledged each other more, pop! What if we supported each other, boop! What if we shared ideas with each other, boop, 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 boop. This whole conversation started. We stayed in that conference room for another hour. So when we think about empowering the people around us, what we want to do is look for things to appreciate. We always find what we look for and have the courage to point it out and not just acknowledge people for what they do, but for who they are. That's what makes a difference. That's the power of appreciation.